Today is the final day of early voting in Georgia's Senate runoff between the Democratic incumbent Raphael Warnock and his Republican challenger, Herschel Walker. So far, record early turnout and eye-popping spending by both parties. Our new CNN poll releasing today, you see it there, shows Senator Warnock with a small lead. Democrats will control the Senate now, no matter who wins on Tuesday. But as both candidates get some high-powered help in these final days, both sides publicly acknowledge having 51 Democrats instead of 50 makes a bigger difference than you might imagine. An extra senator gives Democrats more breathing room on important bills. It prevents one person from holding up everything. And it also puts us in a better position a couple years from now. If it's 50-50, the budgets are the same. Uh, the number of committee people is the same. If it's 51-49, they have one more, one more vote on every committee than us. Uh, the bottom line, it really changes the structure of the Senate. Senator Lindsey Graham and Barack Obama, I saw the nodding, some nodding, some shrugging at the table. They might not be exactly right uh -huh. about how it all plays out, but it is, it is, it is hugely different. It might not, at home you think 5150, what's the big deal? Yeah. Uh, it, does, it does in the terms of the subpoena power, mm -hmm. committee hearings. And yeah, things like I mean, that. look, in, in, because there's a divided government, it will probably would not have as much of an impact as it were if there was one party control. Because in the one party control, as we saw this time, they passed what uh, used the budget process, which could circumvent a filibuster in the Senate, meaning you could pass bills along straight party lines, which is why Joe Manchin had so much power this Congress, because they try to do everything in this, those big bills right. in the Senate along straight party lines. So if he said no, it wasn't going to happen. You get the additional senator, that helps. In the new Congress, we have a Republican con House. A Democratic Senate, so very little is going to get accomplished anyways. Yes, it, it will change some of the committee structure. You may have one more seat margin than you do as a deadlocked Senate, but there are ways to get around that procedurally in the Senate. So it may not have a, as huge of an impact as they're saying, but every Senate vote does count, especially as we get into future election cycles when they're going to be battling one or two seats to take the majority. An additional seat will be crucial. And before we get to that, every vote counts. And so it's encouraging, whether you're Democrat or Republican, to see this record early voting. You see the long lines where Eva was in Atlanta there, largely Democratic in Atlanta. But we've seen large early voting in other parts of the state as well, where you have more Republican voters. Here's our latest poll released just this morning. 52 percent for the Democratic incumbent, 48 percent for the Republican challenger, Herschel Warnock. If you dig deep in it, this is interesting to me. Do you view these candidates as favorable or unfavorable? Senator Warnock, who's the incumbent, 50% favorable, 45% unfavorable. Herschel Walker, you know, football hero, uh, University of Georgia, went on to play in the NFL and the USFL. 39% uh, favorable, 52% unfavorable. It is interesting that the political newcomer has the higher unfavorable rating here. Uh, he's being treated almost like the politician, or is it just because the toll of this campaign, people have more doubts? I think he's run a pretty disastrous campaign, and that if he somehow emerges uh, to prevail... Um, in this runoff contest that Brian Kemp will immediately go to the top of the heap for GOP presidential contenders because it will be all Governor Kemp who has helped push Herschel Walker forward. He's had a number of uh, personal um, uh, scandals, controversies that have come forward. And uh, one of the most popular ads by um, Raphael Warnock's campaign right now is just voters watching Herschel Walker say goofy things on the stump um, that are kind of non sequiturs. Also, his ties to Donald Trump have been problematic in a state like Georgia. But when you look at that polling, that very good, thorough CNN polling, you see how close the race still is anyway, which is why that turnout really, really matters. And, uh, you know, what we know about the general election returns is that uh, around the country, black voters just did not come out uh, en masse with as much strength as uh, they did in the previous election. There are signs that that is different in this runoff, which is really interesting. Uh, talking about the youth voters, Max Frost, the incoming 25-year-old um, youngest ever member of Congress uh, from Florida who is black and Hispanic, uh, is going to be uh, one of the um, kind of political celebrities brought out over the weekend to try to turn out the youth vote in Atlanta. And so let's look a little bit before you jump yeah. in. Just the contrast in the final seconds. Uh, Margaret made the point about the Warnock ads. That was part of Obama's mission, too, mm. that Herschel Walker is not serious. Listen. Since the last time I was here, Mr. Walker has been talking about issues that are of great importance to the people of Georgia, like whether it's better to be a vampire or a werewolf. 
In case you're wondering, by the way, Mr. Walker decided he wanted to be a werewolf. Which is great. As far as I'm concerned, he can be anything he wants to be, except for a United States Senator. Obama trying to join the Democratic effort to say Walker's just not up to the job. He is not serious. Walker, in this, listen to this, this is yesterday, understanding 200,000 people voted for Governor Kemp's reelection, did not vote for him. He's trying to get Republicans who don't like Biden administration policies, but who also don't like him to come over. Here he is on vaccine mandates. 20,000, I want to tell you, is active duty warriors in the United States military that's being kicked out by Joe Biden and Raphael Warnock for not taking that COVID shot. Yeah, yes. And then 40,000 a National Guardsmen that's being cut out of their military benefit by Joe Biden and Raphael Warnock for not taking that COVID shot. Because I think that's immoral and I think it's treason. You see him there trying to scratch his way back into being more of a traditional Republican candidate, which if people viewed him that way in a state like Georgia, he would have a better shot. And you're seeing him do something that a lot, that many members of the Republican Party say wasn't done enough by some candidates leading up to the midterms, which is actually focusing on the Biden administration, not just the previous presidential election or trying to kind of pledge your loyalty to the former president as well. Um, right there, he's actually focusing on some things he thinks can galvanize some Republican voters. But I think it's also interesting that you're seeing some of the, those stump uh, for, for Democrats, for Senator Warnock as well, uh, more of making this a choice rather than a referendum. Um, not just explaining how this could impact Congress, but also uh, uh, saying... Look, just look at the comments of the opponent here. Look at some of the gaps. Look at some of the crises. Look at some of the accusations against him as well. Um, uh, uh, and also remember that we've been here before in terms of a runoff election. Uh, just another note on the early voting, there are some prominent Democrats that are pretty excited about some of those numbers. Uh, yesterday, last night, before the state dinner, uh, Keisha Lance Bottoms, as well as Chuck Schumer, went out of their way to say they've been looking at those numbers and to continue and really much were touting some of the early voting turnout. We'll see how uh, it turns out.